Hello, my fellow bookish people. I come to you today with the mid-year book, Freak Out Tag 2019 edition. I was tagged by a Sean the Bani <laughs> Sean the Maniac. I'm freaking out already. Sean the Maniac and Laura Frey, who uh, told us to, you know, just get a grip and not take it too seriously. You know, so I'm just going to have fun, but I'm also going to try and be brisk because uh, I think I could go hellishly long with this. So let's let's try and go, try and get going. Uh, this was originally created by, co-created by uh, sh both Shami and Earl Grey, Earl Grey Books. Uh, Shami doesn't seem to be doing a lot of book content anymore and I couldn't find any examples of her doing this tag, but I did find one of uh, Earl Grey, like 2016 uh, version of her doing uh, this, 2016 version of her doing this tag. So I'm going to leave that down below because it's always really great when uh, ta tags that have legs that have been around for a while, um, you know, hold on. And I want to hold on to like, you know, hey, these are these are the people who came up with this, brought this content to book two. So, uh, number one, the best book you've read in 2019 and also a uh, reason that I slightly freaked out, it is Christian Lavin's Daughter, which I don't know where my copy is. Did I give it to my partner and has she got it somewhere in this house or did she take it with her? Because I cannot find it and I'm freaking out. So yes, my my definitely the best book that I read in 2019 was Christian's La Christian Lavin's Daughter, uh, written by uh, Sigurd Unset in, Norwe in Norwegian uh, in uh, 1920 to 1922 it was published uh, and was the basis for her winning the Nobel Prize in 1928. Uh, it is... Uh, Tells the life of Christian Slavin's daughter. It's a historical. It's it's a set. It's three like historical novels, which is basically just one one story, one book. Um, because it, it, they all flow right into one one into each other. This is like a Lord of the Rings sort of thing. It's like it's published as a trilogy, but it's actually just one big story, and. It is out, is about this 14th century woman who, um, set in kind of amongst amongst uh, a kind of a very the, the 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 joys of this book is it, it gets that kind of uh the deeply pious a uh, religious spiritual point of view of someone living through these times living through uh the you know plague and just you know being so close to the earth and this being a very newly christianized part of the world where in the woods uh, there, you know, the, the you can see like the there's the old there could be the old folks, and this isn't to say that this is a fantasy novel. This is a historical novel, but the people's viewpoints. It's like there's an account encounter at the very start of one of these books, which is there's like there is um an elf or a dwarf maiden. I can't remember that that someone that that the that Christian sees in amongst the woods, and this might this is. This this may be just her you know her imagination her her basically her worldview of how she makes sense of things but it's also quite because this book sucks you so much into her point of view and the point of view of other characters in this in in this grand life sweeping life spanning novel um, you believe it and you also believe as a very I'm a secular atheist guy of the 21st century uh, that you I'm, I'm just totally enmeshed in her life and just so, so, so going with her in, in, in the ups and downs of she makes a terrible mis a mistake. It's what turns out to be a terrible mistake at the beginning of her life and just how that ripples throughout the rest of her life and affects her, uh, which I found extremely powerful, extremely uh, engrossing uh, is just uh, if you if if you ever want a giant book to just sink into, I would highly recommend this. I read the uh, Tina Nunnally's uh, beautiful translation of this book, uh, and you should. Uh, I'll also put a link to uh, Britta Bowler's uh, great, uh, lovely summation of this book uh, down below because she does a much better job than I of just encapsulating this book uh, in in a in a short pithy pithy eloquent way <laughs> um so yes okay I'm, I'm now i'm gonna pick up speed i promise uh the best sequel you've read so far in 2019 and that would be uh phineas redux i am reading the uh palliser novels the parliamentary novels by anthony trollope uh all written in the kind of the late 1800s by anthony trollope uh they kind of it's called the parliamentary novels because it kind of centers around kind of the political ups and downs of Plantagenet Palliser. Um, but it also um, 
it's also just got a lot of the, the personal the personal in there and a lot of amazing female characters actually for a book that's named after Plantagenet Palliser, I guess, or Palliser. Um, it's it's much more about uh, Lady Glencora and um, a lot of the other female female uh, people in this book who are also struggling uh, in their personal lives because they're denied a political voice at this point uh, to 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 gain kind of their own uh, agency, power, uh, happiness. Um, so yes, that would definitely, and uh, why do I pick Phineas or Dux? Actually, it's because of Phineas, because in the first, first novel, uh, Phineas, Phineas, Phineas Finn, uh, he's a bit of a hairdo. He is somebody who is a pet for some of the female, my much admired female characters. Um, but in the second book, he grows, he, 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 Trollope is good at putting people through the, his characters through the ringer, not George R. R. Martin way, but putting them through the ringer, challenging them. And Phineas Finn kind of rises to that challenge and deepens and matures. And indeed, as you go along in the other books, he's no longer a major character or even a, he's a very, very minor character, but you get like, wow, you get the kind of the strength of this guy, the, how, what he's matured into. So that is definitely my best sequel of within, within those books, at least so far, I'm working on the Duke's children. Not doing well, well for this this whole speed thing. Um, new releases you haven't read yet but want to. I'm going to combine this with uh, with uh, the uh, number four, which is um, most anticipated releases because for all intents purposes, they're both the same to me. I've got three books on order at the library, or that I've got three books requested which are on order, haven't actually come to the library yet. Uh, those are No Walls and The Reoccurring Dream, a memoir by Annie DeFranco. Annie DeFranco is a singer-songwriter. Probably her peak kind of popularity was in like the 90s. And indeed, I actually haven't listened to much of her music since sort of the 90s to early early 2000s uh but you somebody had a great impact on me see i've got the annie defranco haircut here that's what this is um well i actually i don't think I, well yeah <laughs> i'm just gonna say that um so i'm i'm interested i mean sometimes memoirs can be um you know by non-writers can be oh we'll see we'll see but i am kind of looking forward to it just to, to get a glimpse 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 inside of her head from her own voice or whatever wonderful ghostwriter she's selected to, to, to carry her along in that. Um, you always have to have one Steve Donahue recommendation on your new releases, and mine would be The Uninhabitable Earth, uh, Life After Warming by David Wallace Wells, uh, which, um, yes, judging by the number of copies of this book that my library has on order, which is like 25 or 30, this they're also expecting this to be a, a giant a giant book there. They've, they've been watching Steve's videos as well, obviously, and making their, uh, making their orders, uh, accordingly. Uh, so yeah, the life after, you know, uninhabitable earth, life after war warming. I'm sure that's going to be a super happy, fun book, but I I'm looking forward to it. It sounds like it's going to be a challenging, one of those books that you probably got to, you should read to like, you know, find out what, what, what's up next. And maybe why we should be kind of worried about this whole, climate change thing i hear it's a thing you know maybe maybe um and maybe i should be happy maybe i should be sad that i'm not like in my 60s or 70s uh, um and my third and final one in this is this is shakespeare by uh emma smith which is a collection of uh essays new essays on uh, shakespeare which i think i got it from like kind of the guardian and just his idea you know kind of really recontextualizing kind of like up to date, you know, modern fresh takes on Shakespeare, which I thought might be fun coming up to uh, uh, Shaketober, uh, the uh, read along of Shakespeare's Shakespeare's plays with old, old blues chapter and verse, Steve Donahue again, uh, totally pretentious, uh, words, words everywhere. If he's going to do some more uh, sonnets, maybe, uh, perhaps we'll see. Um, and, you know, if that doesn't come through, yes, Kelly, yes, okay, fine. I would, I would also, I would put, pick up a uh, women of will following the feminine in Shakespeare's plays, but that's only if the first, my first pick, cause I picked that one first and that was my choice. If that one comes through, I'm going to do that one. But if it doesn't, then I will do women of will. Um, and, and it's like, I can only read like one of those books, like in a month probably. And I, ca I can't read two. So I'm going to, I, I made that one that way. We'll have two different kind of books to talk about on that so it'll be increasing increasing the uh, Shakespeare love not me not me just going off on my own wanders or whatever um so yes I can skip over number four uh number five my biggest disappointment was probably Traitor's Blade by uh Sebastian 
Guy Castell, who's actually a Canadian Vancouver writer just across the pond, so he can come over here and beat me up. But I really was disappointed with this book. It was sold to me as this kind of fun, swashbuckling book, which maybe it maybe it is. I didn't think it was that well written, just on a on a on a on a, just a world building level. The, the characters are always telling telling us everything versus it being kind of a fantasy where you kind of more elegantly kind of can show the stuff or incorporate it into the story. I uh, even themes were like, you know, I, I rant about this video. My main problem was is that the heroes, all the fun, all the fun uh, adventure is basically based on the fact that at the beginning of the book, the uh, hero's wife is uh, is raped and murdered, and um, that is the driving force of the book, which is not is the definition of not fun for me, and is a is a kind of a is is kind of is a story that I've seen a lot of, and I'm very tired of, and I was tired of it there, and I hate, but I hate read my way through the book, so I guess it's got that for it. There must have something going on, and there there are many people who do enjoy the book. Um, number six, your biggest surprise. Uh, my biggest surprise uh, is a book that I have not actually. Re I, I I've got a bunch of videos out there that I I've just kind of got hanging. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to release them or not. I, I got, I, there was a little bit of tumult uh, for me in booktube. And so uh, a lot of stuff got put, pushed, pushed aside. But for me, uh, sh the biggest surprise was probably Shrill, uh, Notes from a Loud Woman by Lindy West, which I listened to on audio while I was on vacation. Uh, and is, it's, it's a kind of, it is a kind of collection of essays by Lindy West, who is a uh, writer, comedian, uh, essayist, internet internet person who a lot of people on the internet were very, very angry at for a variety of reasons. And I will, if I ever do release that video, I'll, I'll go into more detail, but, uh, it was a, it was a book that really, um, uh, it, at, at the beginning of this book, the essays were a bit kind of were a bit like stand up comedian like, but the later essays, uh, one on her being a fat woman, a self-described fat woman and how, you know, uh, basically kind of coming from the feminist point of view of this is my body. Stop telling me uh, what to do with my body and that I should be thin or that my happiness should, 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 you know, be based on me being thin uh, is uh, one major theme point And actually um, really interesting thing with her, uh, with uh, her boss, uh, Dan Savage, who uh, if you grew, if you were, around listen, reading columns in the 90s, Dan Savage was there and he was making fun of fat people a lot of the time. And her saying like, I was working for him as a fat woman at that point. And, you know, I she told him that she was not cool with that. And it was interesting that back and forth and how very slowly over the thing, you, you can see that um, a slow shift in culture and that she is a part of that kind of agitation, slow agitation, uh, troublemaker shrillness that pushes society maybe to a better place um yeah and other other stuff too but i'm not going to go into it here but yeah that was my biggest i think my biggest pleasant surprise she's like um really thoughtful interesting touching essayist that way um not at kind of like <gasps> essayist is it's like no this is like you know something that 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 um touched me on on that level of um yeah, uh, 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 that, that's how a, a lot of people maybe need intellectual, into the kind of intellectual arguments to kind of um, to change their mind. I'm obviously a much more emotional reader, and that's what I responded to uh, in uh, Lindy West's book. Uh, my favorite new author, my favorite new author uh, is Giuseppe Tomasi di Lampedesu, uh, The Leopard. And sadly, this is his only novel as well, uh, set in... Uh, 18 the 1860s sicily uh this is um garibaldi and the red shirts are showing up and don Fabrizio, the kind of the aristocrat of the island uh he he and his family uh dealing with basically the change this is the great this is the great sea change this is uh this is where uh italy gets unified and also um Things things change and things things stay the same. And I will be doing the review on this. Uh, it's one of these uh, amazing books where like each chapter is almost uh, is a novel in itself. Uh, it is that it's such a thin book, but it's such a dense a dense and rewarding book. Uh, so yes, definitely my favorite new author. Sadly, uh, I think he's got. Um, I think there's something of like selected writings or something like that. Um, there's uh, is much of his uh, much of his. Uh, 
appraisals of English and French literature is collected in the Siren and selected writing. So this book was published in 1957 and he died quite short. He actually died before it was published. So yeah, but definitely my favorite, favorite new author. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Which I mean, I guess is convenient since I, I don't have much more to read of him. Um, your newest fictional crush and this is where laura said like look guys relax don't don't give you don't give me this stern i'm an adult i don't get crushes it's like come on just have fun have fun and with that and steve steve madam max gosler marie uh i won't i won't say her next name uh of of um who appears in phineas finn is definitely my my fictional my is my fictional crush of of this amazing uh, put together woman. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to try and rapidize. I'm not going to try and read a thing out. Yes. Madam Max Gossler. Oh yeah. I, I, I aim high. You gotta, you're going to have to, anyone who reads Trollope says J that, that J he, he aims high at least. You got to give him that. Um, your favorite, your, your newest favorite just character would definitely be Christian Lavin's daughter of Christian Lavin's daughter. Um, you, uh, going with her from birth until un, until death this is this is spans her whole life and you, i'm was so invested in her um saw her at her absolute best at her most passionate at her at her most destructive at her angriest at her most unpleasant you you got the full thing of this character and and wow that is that christian lavin's daughter i i am i am christian lavin's daughter that's how, that's the feel that you get as you go through that book so how can she not be uh my favorite um my uh my newest favorite uh favorite character and book that made you cry it's going to be the the end of uh christian lavin's daughter so that's that's very easy and efficient and i can go on to the next question um my favorite my the uh oh god here here my a book that made me happy a book that made me happy is uh the hitchhikers oh god damn it i'm gonna have to put pictures up here for everything in my book that made me happy is uh the book that was my comfort read just recently which is hitchhiker's guide to the galaxy by douglas adams um i'm always concerned when i push this book forward as like oh wow this is the best book ever because it's not the best book ever lower your expectations it is but it's a book that i carry with me i got i came to it at the right time and it's just, it's in my DNA. Uh, my, um, my, my, um, yeah, it's in my DNA, uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. So yes, but lower, lower expectations, people lower, 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 and, and, and let it just sink in and, and amuse you because after it's amused you, maybe you'll go back to it and you'll read it again and it'll amuse you some more and you'll start noticing more stuff. But it, I don't expect people to be like falling in love and thinking this is an earth shattering book the first time out. No, it's, it's going to amuse you, but it's sneaky that way. It's sneaky that way. Um, 12, your favorite book to film adaptation this year, uh, blah, 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 blah. Um, I, Annihilation. I didn't like the book. Um, because I felt like, um, Jeff Vandermeer is a guy who's more, I like him more as a genre guy. I actually like the movie better because, uh, unavoidable, like the book doesn't name the characters in Annihilation. And so, uh, they go into this mysterious, mysterious X zone. Nobody can know each other's names and, and nobody has any names in the, in the novel. And it's very kind of alienating that way, which is uh, the author's intent. I'll give him that. The movie sort of, Unfortunately, in a movie, you don't really care about what characters' names because you got the faces there. You got Natalie Portman uh, playing like the main character, so you'd say, "Oh, it's Natalie Portman." So it kind of defeats that, but it also made it easier for me to watch. Ready Player One was a cream puff of a novel, which was sort of a guilty pleasure. Which I, I'm always stunned. Like this is a book written by an old guy for other old guys who love '80s stuff, but somehow it crossed over with this kind of little zeitgeist moment of uh, '80s nostalgia, which with people who weren't alive in the 80s going wow weren't the 80s great no the 80s sucked i'm here the 80s sucked you should be goddamn glad that you uh, live in the internet age where you are not isolated and you are you can only only consume uh the mass media pablum that is forced down your throat and you there's nothing else and you desperately grab mixtapes of alternate bands and you share them with your friends because you're so desperate to get out of the mass media uh, situation uh, but people do also have nice nostalgia for that because it was like we're all together all 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 happy all happy straight white People were happy together and anybody who was slightly, you know, off kilter was, uh, okay, I can, 
So my favorite book, to, a movie adaptation with not that many is probably The Meg. The Meg is a stupid movie. Unfortunately, it wasn't as stupid as the book. The book is gloriously stupid. The movie is just sort of stupid. Uh, and you should read the book to uh, appreciate how it should have been way stupider. I don't know if that's a recommendation. Um, my, my movie to book uh, recommendation is uh, Coco, uh, a story about music Music, shoes, and family. This isn't a question in the, in the, in the, uh, in the tag, but I'm inserting it here because I want to make a long video. And, um, because I read to a young woman as a part of my job every night, I, I, I read to her and she selects the books. And, um, the standout from all that reading is, uh, this book, this a book adaptation of the movie. And, um, it's uh, been a wonderful experience have re reading, uh, to this young woman and, and, you know, boy, you really notice a, ter a badly written book uh, when you are reading it out loud. Um, it's it's like it it's oh, it's terrible. It's painful. And Coco not only was a pleasure to this book by Diana Lopez was not only a pleasure to read, but really captured the spirit of uh, a movie, which I also quite like. I quite love. I also shout out to uh, Goosebumps and Slappy there. Uh, I actually also enjoyed reading that out loud, and doing the voices for that. Ah, Slappy. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm a very scary uh, person to have reading you books uh, just before you go to bed, but uh, she seems to enjoy it. Uh, number 13, your favorite video that you filmed this year. Uh, for me, uh, that most definitely is the the video that I did about my, uh, about, uh, my teacher uh, back at UVic, Patrick Lane, uh, poet, teacher, um, this is a guy who I only knew very briefly in my life, but had, had a really big, big impact on me. Um, someone who, it's funny, you, you meet people in your life and they really touch you and they leave their mark. And Patrick Lang was that kind of guy. And, um, I was really, really happy to have this channel to be able to share that, uh, share that memory. Um, yeah, yeah, that was, that was, that was the, that was the, that was the video I'm probably the, the most proud of whether it's good or not. I'm, I'm, I'm really, I'm so happy I have this channel because I got to, I got to talk about Patrick Lane. Um, yes. Okay. Yeah. I'm a crier. Um, the most beautiful book you've read this, bought this year or received, that would be The Leopard by, um, as I said, Tomasi de Lampedesu. I bought this at the Anglo-American Company uh, bookstore in Rome. Uh, and yes, I just love that. I love for me, covers, I love iconic covers, and it's like, it's the rampant leopard, I, I imagine, on, uh, on of, 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 of um, Don Fabrizio, um, who is often described as the leopard within the book, and apparently this isn't like a leopard, it's almost like a Mars, it's, it's actually it's kind of a smaller version of a uh, leopard, but uh, yeah, that's, that, that is, to me, that is ideal cover, I love these iconic, I love iconic covers that, uh, um, unlock my imagination versus doing, trying to do the work for me, much like, much like words do themselves. Um, what books do you need to read by the end of the year? Well, I would often say, oh, I'm a mood reader. I just go where the wind blows me, but now I'm on booktube and I'm, and I've been very lucky. Uh, Brian said, Hey, would you like to do a buddy read? And so we are going to buddy read, uh, cousin bet, uh, by Henri de Balzac. And, um, I've been wanting to read more Balzac and I've been collecting Balzac uh, for the longest of time since university and not reading them. So this is a great opportunity. I'm going to, so we're going to be buddy reading Cousin Bet, but Cousin Bet is the second of a duology. So I have to read uh, Cousin Pons so then I can go along to Cousin Bet. So yes, Brian, I, 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 I am on this. I am on this and I will, I will, Cousin Pons will be the first. The, the first to go. Uh, of course, I've got the Duke's children going with uh, with uh, Steve Donahue. That's just ongoing right at the moment. Uh, yes, yes, God. Um, oh, and um, I haven't mentioned your name yet, Jason, but uh, Jason o at Old Blues Chapter and Verse is the one who got me on to Christian Lavin's daughter in the first place, and I always thank him for that. But he is a big fan of the, um, I don't know if it's called the Wolf Hall series, the, the Cromwell Cromwellian uh, series by um, Hilary Mantel, and I read Wolf Hall. I, I love I love Hilary Mantel. I think I I've often said um, that uh, Beyond Black 
uh, her novel, actually before all this kind of historical novel nonsense started, uh, is, is like my favorite, is, is one of my favorite books. I read Wolf Hall and I was, I wrestled with Wolf Hall. And I will get into that when I reread Wolf Hall, because that is one of the other books that I am going to, I'm going to, I'm going to read. I'm going to read Wolf Hall uh, with, along with a bunch of other people that Jason is kind of riling together because he is super, super excited because uh, the third in this uh, thing, I'll put the picture of it up here because I cannot remember the name, the perspective picture of it up here because I can't remember its name. Um, is coming out in January. So he's go we're going to be, he wants to read Wolf Hall. He wants to read, uh, the, uh, the next one, but th that doesn't matter to me, that, that, that next one right there. Uh, but uh, I'm going to start off. I'm going to reread Wolf Hall and see if I still have problems with it. Cause I read it and I, there were issues. I had issues and I want to reread it and, and see if I can defuse those issues or examine those issues. But I can definitely blather on at great length about those issues. I, I, I guarantee you that. I guarantee you that. Uh, so yes, that is the uh, mid-year book freakout tag. And I freaked out and I had fun, Laura. So I, I, I'm just having fun with it. And uh, yes, I've been really enjoying everyone else's videos. And this will be late, late to the party. So uh, if you haven't done it, it's never too late. Well, maybe 2020 would be too late. But if you, if you're watching this in 2019 and you're not too far off the mid year point, and you're not just like, ah, oh, screw it. I'll just do the end of the year one. Um, definitely check out this, do this tag or check out all the other people's versions of it. Uh, Sean, the book maniac, uh, Laura, Laura Frey, um, all, all the, all the, all the great, there's so many, everybody, I think everybody and their mother has done this tag. Yes. All right. I'm taking a breath and I'm saying more videos later.